Hello, investors and traders, and welcome to the Weekly Market Report. I'm A.J. Monty, and this is a one-year daily candle chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF, ticker symbol DIA. As you can see from the chart, I've left my lines on from last week, so you can see how things are shaping up. And last week, I talked about this megaphone top. Let me back up first and show you. Talked about the megaphone top and the dangers of this type of a broadening pattern. And I also mentioned and will continue to reiterate the fact that risk management should be at the top of your list right now. As the markets go higher, I personally am getting more defensive. I'm scaling out of some positions and even adding to certain positions, especially in the option markets. If you're following along with my trade alerts, You'll know the option traders have not had a losing trade yet. Even though the charts are still going higher against what we forecast, we originally put on call spreads, we put on put spreads, we're doing both, and we're making money on those trades. So again, we're tracking 100% success on our trading, but at the same time, my role here today is to help you focus on the downside, especially if we start to pull back below these moving averages. So... That's the Dow broadening top. Keep an eye on that. Now, if I go to the daily chart again, you'll see that we almost came down on Wednesday to hit this target. My forecast was that we'd move to that moving average. That did not happen. Let me do this. Because we're coming into December, many people will look forward to the year-end rally, a.k.a. the Santa Claus rally. So what I'm going to do is more or less condense this price action and really label the risk management points or the trailing stop levels. Right here, obviously, is a support level that I'm going to leave as ultimately a gap fill target. But you can see right here, this little hammer pattern forms very close to that 20 period moving average. So if I draw a horizontal line from there, that is going to be the level that you're going to protect. So in other words, if you buy any of a Dow stock and it's looking like this, you would put your stop below that key support level and you will also see that that's below the 20 period moving average. Now, as we move into the end of the year, we might go a little bit higher, but ultimately I think we're going to pull back. I'm leaving these lines in just like that as your risk management points and then we'll go week to week until we get the absolute reversal, and then we'll go back into putting price targets. If you're interested in looking for individual price targets on individual stocks, I do what's called the Oracle Hour on Wednesdays. You're more than welcome to ping me on that. Either go through the Facebook page that I have or email me if you have that, and then you could plug in on Wednesday. Now, again, the risk management is most important. Here's our sell stop level support and sell stop right below there now if i go to the vix i'm going to hop right to the vix because the vix also known as the fear index is more or less drifting sideways i put a two-week forecast on this actually it's closer to a three-week forecast i'm going to leave that in place just like that because we're still bouncing off of this area now if i zoom in just a little bit You'll see a hammer pattern there. Hammer patterns have longer shadows underneath the body of that candle. And you can see we're back to back hammer patterns here. Hammer, 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 just like that. That generally shows up at the end of a downward leg. And that's why I'm keeping that target right there around 25 on the VIX. Now remember, it's known as the fear index. So if it's going down, what does that mean? It means investors and traders a more or less relaxing right now. And that's usually when the markets get to be in that danger zone because as people relax, they're just more or less in this euphoria of, okay, I'm going to keep setting record highs here, and they relax. And then when things start to turn down, obviously the fear starts to creep in and then prices start to drop. So many times I refer to the VIX as a contrarian indicator to the S&P, and so we keep an eye on that. We most definitely keep it on our watch list. Now, don't get me wrong. Last week, I think it was Harry Dent called for a 40% pullback in the Dow. I think that could happen, actually. I don't think it's going to happen right away. 
That could take two years to happen if that in fact does happen, but I'm not going to create any kind of panic like that. I do believe that there's opportunity. You just have to be very disciplined in managing your risk and making sure that using indicators like the VIX right there. So let's go right to the S&P, the symbol SPY. Again, we're right at the top, right there at the megaphone top. Now, as I go back and look at that, again, on the monthly chart, I pointed this out. We're showing much, much higher highs here. But look, the CCI is not going any higher. In fact, it's doing the opposite. As the highs get higher, the highs on the CCI are actually getting lower, even though on this month so far, we have a higher high. Look at that. We have not surpassed. I'll zoom in there. We have not surpassed the highs from two months ago. Very interesting. So going back to the daily chart, what are we going to do? We're going to erase these lines. We're going to redraw where the risk points are. So again, if you're trailing your stop, you'll know exactly where to get out. Right there, just like the diamonds, we have a hammer pattern that more or less matches up with that 20 period moving average. We have a gap here and we have a gap all the way down here. I'm going to keep these lines in place because why? 80% of the time gaps fill. We don't always know when, but 80% of the time they do. And we have successive gaps on the way up. So again, if you have any kind of S&P stocks and you're looking at them very similar to this index, then you're going to be keeping an eye on that support level. And if things start to break out below that, you're going to manage risk, keeping your stops in place just like that. Okay, let's move to the IWM right there. Similar story. I'm not going to repeat the same things over and over again. We got the megaphone top. We got gaps below the market. What I'm going to do right there is draw your support level so you know where to manage the risk. Again, not quite a hammer pattern here, but we're going to go with this low connected to that low and move out just like that. If you're setting a stop on any kind of the smaller cap stocks that trade within the Russell, you're going to give that a little bit more room to the downside. So your stop is going to be somewhere down below that moving average right there. Again, notice, look what's happening. Higher highs here, higher highs here. Uh-oh, what's happening down here? Not higher highs. We're showing lower highs right there. So one other thing about the CCI, if you don't follow it, it's more sensitive to momentum changes than the stochastics up here. So while we're looking at price, while we're looking at support, while we're tracking volume, you want to keep an eye on the CCI because if it starts to hinge lower, just kind of turns lower and starts crossing, then that could stimulate some selling activity, maybe even some profit taking from those who bought much lower. Now let's look at this one. We've got the Qs, QQQ, very interesting right here. It didn't pull back, but look at this. Look at that. Eight green candles in a row count them right there it's known as a stale green light i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to draw the support levels that you have to watch out for we're most likely going to get a red candle up here soon i would say that in early in the week we're going to start to pull back but this is the low that you have to watch out for again like the other markets that little hammer pattern right there the low is going to be support and matches right up against that 20 period moving average so we're going to put that stop right below there and also keep in mind that there's a gap below the market remember i have some comments that come in on the youtube you know people say well how could you be wrong well i'm not wrong i'm reading the charts and the charts in my opinion are not wrong they're just not right yet and i know that might sound like a joke but i'm very serious because if you get caught up in this i can do no wrong buy the stock and make money mentality then that's the type of attitude that's going to create big problems down the road. Because for a lot of people that, again, looking at the queues, for instance, look how vertical this has gone. You know, we have had a beautiful trend throughout this bull market. And then what happened right here, 2015, 16, right there, we accelerated that. And then as we come into 2020, look at this. In, in one year, we are showing gains that are again unsustainable growth and areas where this 
could be very dangerous because again if people think they could do no wrong and they bought down here they'll start to do what they'll start to hold on because they have profits or enough cushion in a stock to give them that sense of okay I'm still going to hold on and see what happens because I have so much profit built into that trade but then as soon as it crosses over that threshold where the winners start turning into losers that's where people really start to get themselves in trouble so keep an eye on that notice that most extreme fan line look where it intersects right here boom right with that support level so if we start breaking down below that fan line anywhere in this area my general rule for trading fan lines is that if it breaks below the most extreme fan line, there's an 80% chance it goes to the next fan line in the sequence. Don't take my word for that. Go back in history and look and draw your own fan lines. You'll see that when the fan lines get broken, they generally go to the next fan line in the sequence. That's why I'm keeping such a close tab on those support levels. So hopefully you've enjoyed this report. Please click on the subscribe button click on the like button make some comments of course click on the notification button so that way when I send this out it will get emailed directly to you or you'll get notified that the report is out and you can go pick it up right away so thanks again have a great weekend we'll talk to you soon so long